Hi everyone, my name's Joe Glass. I'm a comic book writer and reader and welcome to my channel. Obviously taking another little bit of a break. I was just kind of getting my head around what exactly I was doing with this channel and what I wanted to sort of come of it. And something which has been a part of that is actually realizing that, you know, I kind of fallen into doing comics reviews. I mean, it didn't help what I was calling them comics reviews, even though I said like, I was just going to tell you about things I love in comics at the moment, not necessarily review them. And then I just realized that, yeah, I've just kind of been reviewing things, which is obviously what I used to do before. Um, I focused on my career as a writer, so I obviously just fell into the habit. And that's something which I'm stopping. So you might have noticed I've changed the name of the playlist and everything. So it's actually just going to be comics I love rather than comics reviews. And as such, like I say, I'm not going to be like, breaking apart um, comics or anything. I'll just be sort of telling you like, yo, what book am I, that's out, but I'm really enjoying who it's by and just trying to convince you to go and get it. Cause that's the main thing for me with these videos was just something to do when I have a bit of downtime and I have a bit of extra time to do these kind of things, but also just tell people about the comic books, which I'm really enjoying and hopefully get more people to read them because you know, the more people reading them, the longer the series is gonna run and that's, what I would love to see because obviously I'm enjoying them. So without further ado, I'm going to sort of uh, talk about some of the comic books which I've been enjoying over the last two weeks, seeing as I've taken that little break. So just a little bit of a catch up with some books which really sort of struck out at me and which I'm just really loving and you know, the series is, which some of them I've actually think I've spoken about before, but like they had great issues in the last two weeks. So yeah, I'm just going to talk about them again. First up is The Nice House on the Lake by James Tynan before. Alvaro Martinez Bueno, I hope I've got that right, and Jordi Belay with Andwell Design doing all the lettering. I'm just really loving this. We're only like two issues in. It's a really interesting concept. It's a new uh, DC Black Label title, though unlike many other DC Black Label titles, it is actually nothing to do with DC Universe characters as such. It's an entirely creator-owned original story, all about this kind of like it's hard to speak, actually describe it without spoiling anything. Basically, there's a group of people who find themselves um, on a trip away at this beautiful, beautiful house on a lake um, somewhere in America. And yeah, something happens and their little beautiful time away might turn out into something far more sinister. And like I said, we're only two issues in. The mystery is still sort of like a big part of it. It's just really, really fun to read. I think anyone who likes sort of like films like Signs or just any kind of like very cerebral, thought-provoking sort of sci-fi twisted, but ne not necessarily sci-fi needed, um, but definitely sort of like psychological thrillers, then this is a comic book for you. Like it's really intense. I bet this is going to get adapted. So this is either going to be like the next big TV series or the next big movie. So yeah, you should totally check it out. That's The Nice House on the Lake. There's two issues out at the moment. It's, I think it's maybe going to be about 12 issues in total. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm just sort of judging by these funny symbols on the thing because um, each of these sort of relates to a character. Um, so yeah, yeah, I would say definitely check this one out. Next up was X-Men number one with Jerry Duggan doing the writing. Um, we have art by Pepe Larraz with colours by Marta Glacia. And the letters were by Clayton Coles. It is superb. This is a absolutely brilliant um, start to a new um, run on X-Men. It's to anyone who doesn't read comics generally and may get confused by the fact that there's like X-Men's got like 13 number ones or something like that. Generally speaking, yes, I get what you're saying. Um, but at the same time, every time there's a new number one, it generally just means it's a new run on the series. <laughs> so yeah, what I would say is don't be too worried about it. It's actually a pretty good jumping on point. You do kind of need to know some things going in, like there's some major changes in the world of mutants as part of the Marvel Universe. So like I say, I would certainly recommend reading House of X, Powers of Ten, um, which was like, year or two ago now and yeah you should maybe read planet sized x-men one which was actually by the same creative team it takes place before this there's the next big thing which is to happen in the world of mutants so it's kind of worthwhile reading both before starting this so technically if you did just start on x-men one you can kind of get a gist of what's going on really interesting setup i really love the fact that we're not getting the x-men back into the whole like superhero mole kind of thing in the marvel universe but also we're getting the, the sort of really interesting, really different villains who hate mutants for entirely different reasons. 
um, than what we've normally seen before. So yeah, I'm really excited to see where this goes. It, it was just a hell of a start of a superhero story. Like as someone who writes superhero comics himself, that was just really great. That was like how you do superhero books. So I'm very excited to see how this keeps on going. Next up is Eternals by uh, Kieran Gillen, Isad Ribic, Matthew Wilson and Clayton Coles. Um, it is superb. Obviously everyone knows Eternals is going to be one of the next big Marvel movies coming out in, I want to say like December. Um, I could be entirely wrong. Uh, that trailer didn't really give us a lot of information, but yeah, the comic book is where it's at right now. Um, Eternals is a really interesting one, because technically speaking, for anyone whose main reason for not getting into comics is, oh, there's so many, I don't really know where to start, Eternals actually doesn't have that many comics, at least none which were like just Eternals. Obviously, the Eternals have appeared in other Marvel uh, Universe comic books, and like, you know, for a long time, like some of them have even been Avengers, but you, if you were looking for just like Eternals comic books, like titular Eternals, then there's not that many. So you could actually probably get all of it pretty easily and read it all pretty quickly and be caught up. What this new run is doing is sort of introducing the Eternals into the current Marvel Universe and sort of really sort of seeing where they are and what makes them tick. And what I really love about this is the way Kieran's been writing it, it's very much like his series The Wicked and the Divine in a way but in the Marvel Universe. So anyone who is a big fan of The Wicked of the Divine, but doesn't generally love superhero comics, should maybe check out The Eternals. I think The Eternals will be something that you'll really enjoy. In fact, there's this really interesting conceit in it where the, the Earth is actually a narrator and has gone a bit haywire, is going a bit mad. Um, and anyone who's seen Kieran at a party at Fort Bubble probably will understand what this narration sounds like. So yeah, I would say check it out. It's um, it's a lot of fun. It's been a joy to read. It's very much as well like how the Hickman era has sort of changed how mutants and the X-Men are in the Marvel Universe. So Eternals is a great book doing the same sort of thing, but its own different take on things as well. So yeah, check out Eternals. It's a lot of fun. Next up is The Department of Truth, yet again by James Tynan IV, because James Tynan's just doing everything absolutely out of the park, stellar fantastic these days. Art is by Martin Simmons, with lettering by Ida Jibitaka. This series is just immense. It is absolutely superb. We're about 10 issues in now, so I think the first trade is out as well. You've got to read it. Like, this is the next big thing. And again, much like The Nice House on the Lake, I, I this is just dying for an adaptation. So this is going to become a TV show or a film someday. Definitely a TV show, I reckon. I think this has got a HBO Max written all over it. So yeah, I would say you want to be pick up this book like a sap and get involved because it is super. If you were a fan of a show like The X-Files, this is The X-Files done way more intelligently and way more maturely. It's well worth checking out. And given how much it discusses the idea of conspiracy theories, um, and let's face it, in our day now, in our world as it is, which is rampant with wild conspiracy theories about ri with ridiculous things, this is brilliant. This is really smart and incredibly well researched. So yeah, definitely check out The Department of Truth. It is brilliant. You will absolutely love it. If you don't read comics, but you just love yourself some psychological thriller kind of stuff, this is for you. Finally, Crossover. I've definitely talked about this series before, but this is a very interesting issue. Crossover normally is by Donny Cates and Jeff Shaw, but this particular issue is actually a guest issue, which has been done by Chip Zdarsky with Phil Hester on the art, Andy Parks, Dee Cunniff, and Junja Hill. So yeah, it's it's got a different writer and a different, uh, largely different creative team involved in making this story. And this particular issue is superb. It's incredibly meta, but given what crossover is a story about, which is about fictional characters coming to the real world and what happens afterwards, then yeah, the whole book is really meta. So it fits, but it's a really interesting and intriguing meta in a different way, uh, because if anyone who doesn't know Chip Zdarsky well. Chip Zdarsky is a brilliant writer, like that goes without saying, surely. He's also a brilliant artist as well, uh, but he's not doing the art on this issue. Anyone who knows anything about Chip is, Chip is a character, and that comes into play in this issue in such an interesting way. Um, so yeah, if you love like these metatextual moments, like where the author meets their characters and stuff like that, you are going to love this issue of Crossover. I would say that you're going to love Crossover as a whole. In fact, yeah, if you love anything by like Grant Morrison 
or Alan Moore, or even just want like weird, weird stuff. Crossover is a book for you and I think you're gonna love it. So yeah, those are some of the comic books which I've been loving lately. I've really, really been enjoying and I really hope that you check them out and you really enjoy them as well. Please, please, please let me know in the comment section below what comics you're reading, what comics you're really loving at the moment. And yeah, may maybe I'll check them out. Maybe I can fall in love with something else myself. I'll be here next time when I next do an update and I'll just tell you about more comic books, which I love. Um, I might make these a little bit more irregular. They might not be weekly anymore. They might become more once every two weeks because I've got to admit, I think this worked really well. Having a bit more issues, just talk and just fly through them and just talk about these comic books I'm loving. So yeah, I would say that that's probably going to be how things go in the future. Um, but that may change because, as I said, this is just very relaxed. This is just me doing a bit of fun while I've got time. <laughs> Videos will come when they come. It's been really great to make another video for you guys. And hopefully I will see you all soon. And thanks again for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.